Hello and welcome to Linda's Take. Today we are going to look at the SAM Module 2 Project 1B Edgerton Norris. The first thing that I need to do is download my instructions and then my starter file. So I've done that. I have my starter file here. The first thing I need to do with that is click on Enable Editing so that I am able to make changes. Then I'm going to save the file, changing that one to a two. I have my file saved and I am ready to begin working on my project steps. First thing that I am asked to do is to change the name of my worksheet tab from Invoice to Current Invoice. So down here on the Invoice tab, I can right click, or you can also double click it, and I'm going to rename, and I'm going to rename this Current Invoice. This is a very important step. If you don't do this step, or if you misspell, or don't capitalize the current invoice name on this step, you will get a zero for the entire project because the grader can't find the worksheet. So make sure that you make the changes here to your worksheet tab. Now I want to middle align my contents of cell A1. So I'm going to bring my mouse up here to A1. Up here in the alignment grouping, I'm going to choose middle align to make that change. I'm going to format the section that has the billing information. So I'm going to select that range. So I'm going to come up here to my name box and I'm going to type in that range A2 through F4 to select that range. Then I want to add some outside border and I want to change the color of that border. So I'm going to come up here in my font grouping to my borders, come down here to more borders, change my color to green accent 4 and then I'm going to just mark all the way around the outside edge. Click OK to make my outside border that green color. Next I want to apply the short date number format to cell F3. So you can see in F3 I do have a date but I want it formatted in a different way. So up here in my number grouping, I can click on this arrow right here, come down to short date, and it's going to make it 4-3-2021. Now I'm going to go to the Invoice Tracker Worksheet. So down here in my Worksheet tabs, I'm going to select the Invoice Tracker Worksheet, and I'm going to make some changes. So the first thing I want to do is up here in A1. So I'm going to select and make my A1 my active cell. I'm going to change the font to Franklin Gothic Medium. So remember your fonts are in alphabetical order. Come down to Franklin Gothic Medium and make that change. I'm going to change my font size to 18 point. And I'm going to make my font color, which is this A icon right here, and I'm going to make it white background 1. I'm going to bold. Then I want to merge the worksheet title across the range A1 to I1. So I'm going to select that range A1 through I1. Then up here in the merge and center area, I'm going to click on the arrow because I don't want to merge and center. I just want to merge. So I'm going to select Merge Across to make that change here. Working on down the assignment, I want it wants me to resize the width of column A and B using Auto Fit. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make my mouse look like that downward arrow over A to select it, and I'm going to drag and select B. Now you'll notice here on my worksheet A3, I have those hashtags or pound symbols 
That depends on which generation you're from. Um, I call it pound symbols. Some of you might refer to those as hashtags. That means that your column is not wide enough to show all of your numbers. So anytime you see that on your Excel spreadsheet, your column needs to be made wider. I want to auto fit A and B. So I want my columns to automatically be as wide as the widest entry. So I'm going to come up here between A and B. And when my mouse changes shapes to that double headed arrow, I'm going to double click. And you can see now, you can see that number there. Those hashtags are gone. And we are ready to move on to our next step in our assignment. We have some uh, duplicate values and we don't want them. We want to make sure we get rid of them. So we are going to use our conditional formatting rule to get rid of our duplicate values. We're going to select the range A5 through A16. Going to come up here to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. Then we're going to come down over here to duplicate values. And we want that to be light red fill with dark red text. We're going to say OK. And you can see we have two duplicate values. We want to delete the first duplicate value. So we're going to come up here to row 9, make our arrow right facing, select that, call, select that row, right click, and then choose delete. We also want to keep a running count of our invoices that have been sent to clients. We want to show that information in B3. Up here, we're going to make B3 our active cell. Select Formulas in your tab and come over here to More Functions. Go to Statistical. Then scroll down to Counta. We want to just count our values. So here we want to select the range that we want in value A or value 1. And we want the range A5 through A15. We're going to say and then enter. And you can see we have 11 total invoices in that range. E4, you can see we don't have all of our text that shows up in our tab. Now, we could do the auto fit, and that would make our text appear. But we want it to require less horizontal space. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to resize column E to 9.0. So up here between E and F, I'm going to click and hold my left mouse key and just drag over until it says width 9.00. Then I'm going to come up here on my ribbon and select my Home tab and come over here to Wrap Text. And that's automatically going to display my information in two lines instead of one. We want to apply some shading to our invoice just to make it look a little nicer. So we are going to select two ranges. The first range that we're going to select is A2 to C3. Then I'm going to hold down on my Control key, and I'm going to select the range A17 to B19. I have those two ranges selected. Now I can come up here to my shading, and I'm going to select the color Green Accent 3, Lighter, 80%, just to make that stand out just a little bit more. In A3, we want to change our decimal places to 2. So we're going to make A3 our active cell. Up here in the number group grouping, we are going to decrease the decimal by 1 to make that change. Then in A4, through I4, we're going to select that range, and we want to apply a cell style. So up here in our Styles grouping, we're going to click on the More button here and come down to 40% Accent 3. Make that stand out. The headings stand out from the rest of our information. 
d5 to, three, to d15, we want to apply the accounting number format to show that these values are dollars. So we're going to go d5 down to d15. Come up here in the accounting number format is this dollar sign here to make that change. We're also going to take that range and we want to apply data bars so that we can see at a glance which invoices are higher than others. To do that, we're going to use conditional formatting, data bars, and we want the gradient fill green data bar. Okay, moving forward, we want to use our conditional formatting to show which invoices have not yet been paid. So we're going to come up here first and select the range F5 through F15. This is where we have our information on our paid invoices at. Can I come up here to conditional formatting? We're going to go to highlight cells rules. This time we will select equal to, and we want it equal to in, and we want those filled with a light red fill with dark red text, and we're going to say OK. Now we can see at a glance which ones have not yet been paid. In B17, we want to enter um, a function that's going to show us our average amount. So make B17 your active cell. Come up here to the auto sum on our home tab. I'm going to click on that little more arrow. I'm going to choose average. Now you can see Excel puts a range around the area it thinks it's wanting, that we are wanting, and it is not correct. We want the range D5 through D15, so I can just come over here and select that range by clicking in D5, then dragging down to D15. I'm going to hit my check mark to enter that amount. In B18, I want the maximum invoice amount. So make B18 your active cell. Come up here to the auto sum, select the arrow, then come down here to the max. Again, our range is not correct that Excel has selected for us. So we're going to come over here and select the range D5 through D15 again. Click on the check mark to enter that. Then we're going to come down to B19. This time we're going to choose the min. We want the minimum invoice amount. And again, our range is not correct, so we need to come up here and select the range D5 through D15. Then click on the check mark to enter that into our spreadsheet. We want to check the spelling of our workbook. The easiest way to do this is to move your active cell to the very first cell in your worksheet. Then we're going to come up here to review, click spelling, and we're going to make changes to the ones indicates, then click OK. The last step that we're going to do is change the tab color of our invoice tracker worksheet so that it matches our current invoice. So move your mouse down over the invoice tracker tab and right click, choose tab color. We want green accent three. After we've changed our tab color, we are ready to save our file and go back to our class in Cengage. And so now we're ready to look at our graded summary report and we have a 100 out of 100. So I hope you've learned some new things working through this assignment with me here on Linda's Take. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel and have a great day.